Hi, I'm Antonius and I'm the painter in this video. Today you will see my favorite uh, opera singer Maria Callas and uh, I want to share with you the process of painting her portrait using a black and white uh, photograph that uh, I found online of course. And uh, it's interesting because I'm using traditional uh, uh, painting techniques like uh, the sfumato and uh, I try to recreate the colorful image of this uh, photograph and uh, painting thus the portrait of Maria Callas. If you are interested in seeing the, this uh, process, stay in this video and I'll try to explain it as uh, thoroughly as I can. Of course, you can visit my Patreon page where you can find more uh, tutorials there, useful tutorials uh, there. And um, those of you who are familiar with this uh, channel, uh, you already understand what I'm doing here and what I've done, uh, having transferred already my drawing on uh, my wood panel board that uh, I have prepared with uh, a gesso and uh, uh, then I have uh, already painted this uh, underpainting, this black and white uh, um, portrait that uh, you see that will uh, help me later on um, familiarize with the areas of uh, shadow and the areas of uh, light. So now, as you see, after I've, uh, I'm done with my underpainting, and as I said, you can find more on other videos in this channel on the black and white underpainting and uh, its uh, purpose and uh, use. Uh, now you see me painting these uh, shadowy areas of uh, the face and uh, of course I'm using oil color uh, here as my medium and uh, I've prepared uh, this uh, color on my palette uh, with uh, mixed uh, uh, black, a little bit of uh, cadmium uh, yellow, a little bit of uh, iron oxide uh, red maybe, or any kind of uh, red you might have. I want to, to create this uh, greenish uh, and um, brownish uh, colors. And as you see, I am uh, spreading this uh, this color on uh, the underpainting in a way that uh, makes sense and uh, um, feels uh, useful. Now, after I've done this, I create on my palette a fleshy color, a color that consists of uh, titanium white, uh, some cadmium uh, yellow, a little bit of cadmium uh, red. Uh, also, I want to, to to scale it down to grayish, uh, this col color down a little bit, so I might add a little bit of uh, black, but uh, I don't want this to be completely, completely gray. It's uh, a color that uh, if you saw this on uh, on a palette, you would see how uh, dark uh, it uh, seems in comparison to you know a white uh, surface of uh, the palette. It's a relatively dark tone, although here it seems uh, bright enough. And uh, with uh, this uh, first, uh, say, layer of uh, fleshy co color, I will uh, try to find these uh, shapes of uh, light on her face. And uh, after this, as you see now, I am uh, spreading this uh, color uh, towards the edge. The idea of uh, this step here is to just experiment, uh, um, not experiment, explore the, um, the areas of uh, light and shadow and create a, a very first sense of uh, volume uh, on her face, along with uh, uh, doing some uh, first uh, blending between the shadows and the light. Sometimes uh, um, Many students ask me what's the purpose of uh, some steps, since, uh, as you will see, I'm going to cover this uh, whole uh, uh, surface with uh, other layers of uh, oil color. And uh, many students ask me, well, okay, so what's the purpose uh, if, uh, if everything is going to be covered with something else, uh, what's the purpose? Uh, in my opinion, sometimes... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, all these layers of uh, of painting uh, add more to the visual richness of a portrait they definitely make a portrait uh, more rich and uh, nice even though uh, you know maybe it's something it's covered but uh, some areas might uh, um, stay visible or they can inform from underneath the painting so everything is uh, useful and everything uh, adds for the final beautiful result so here as you see i am uh, adding uh, a first solid uh, layer of uh, color a color that is uh, a little bit more uh, thick in uh, in its uh, substance and um, for this uh, layer of uh, color i don't want to uh, to be very to use very warm tones so as you see these tones are slightly greenish they can be bluish as well i I don't uh, exaggerate, I would say, but definitely I want to use uh, uh, tones that are slightly colder than uh, rosy, reddish uh, colors. I, when I'm painting these portraits, uh, I am in a mode of exploring, exploration, and uh, I want to, you know, experiment a little bit because uh, I find that I generally dislike uh, the recipes for uh, painting. I've never used uh, a specific recipe and I try to, uh, to find uh, myself the way to paint something. Here you see the, uh, the final result of this uh, first uh, greenish, let's say, uh, layers of uh, painting and uh, here I try to blend as uh, uh, best uh, as I can without uh, as I say I don't use any recipe so uh, I try to observe um, other paintings from the masters and try to guess how they might have achieved their uh, results and uh, I try somehow to recreate uh, those results in a way that feels uh, organic to me in a, that feels you know comfortable that doesn't exhaust uh, uh, me um, so that's why probably I'm not uh, fond of uh, you know recipes and uh, I'm more relying on my instinct and um, you know my intuition I think uh, you, this is how you should approach these uh, uh, videos as well. You can see the process of another painter, uh, me in this case, and then see how much of this process uh, suits you uh, and uh, how much of this process you can take and use for uh, your own uh, artwork, your own purpose. And of course, sometimes it's nice to see something that will uh, uh, really help you uh, you know, gain time, something that will lead you to uh, some knowledge that um, other people have struggled for uh, with so much uh, experimentation to, uh, to achieve. So here I'm re-establishing, let's say, this first greenish uh, uh, tones of color here on her face. I am applying uh, um, one more solid layer of uh, color and then as you see I will blend this color with uh, uh, almost a dry brush. The sfumato technique is, uh, as its name also indicates, uh, a technique of painting that uh, somehow resembles uh, uh, fog, resembles uh, smoke and uh, definitely this way of blending color using, uh, um, as you see here, a completely uh, new, it doesn't have to be new, but a completely dry, let's say, brush, um, and not of the best uh, quality necessarily, uh, it does create this uh, beautiful, uh, hazy, smoky effect that uh, is so characteristic uh, in some um, masterpieces of uh, the Renaissance, um, Da Vinci and uh, many other painters of, from that uh, era. Of course, there are uh, innumerable ways to paint uh, something. Uh, each painter has uh, uh, his or her own uh, 
technique, let's say, and uh, visual signature, and that's uh, the, the beauty of uh, painting. Um, you we have artworks that are almost uh, look like uh, a poster, very simply, let's say, painted. And we have uh, uh, other depictions of the human form that are uh, so complex, so um, delicately painted that... Uh, um, and they are both, you know, they are both uh, artworks in their own way. There is no correct or mistaken way to paint something. Here in this case, I want to uh, to paint this portrait of Maria Callas in a way that is delicate, and I want to give all my precision and my attendance, let's say, to this uh, face to create a visually rich with. Uh, many layers uh, painting of uh, her face. So now as you see I am uh, applying uh, a third uh, layer uh, some days uh, later this uh, rosy tones of uh, color that you see are painted um, a few days later when the underneath greenish tones are uh, dry. So I apply some rosy um, color on her face and uh, now as you see with again a brush that feels uh, like it can do the job I will uh, spread this uh, color and um, create again one more layer of this uh, foggy smoky effect. For this uh, process I'm using uh, as less uh, uh, linseed extra oil as uh, possible. I don't use much oil, just the oil that uh, is contained in the color itself and uh, this uh, helps create very thin layers of uh, color uh, to paint these very thin layers that uh, are um, very uh, charming and uh, they can accept later on thicker uh, layers of uh, color. Here it's most uh, useful to see the use of uh, the brush, how much I insist uh, until I get this uh, uh, hazy effect. It's almost, uh, since the color is uh, relatively dry on uh, on her uh, on the panel at this point it's not dry but uh, it doesn't have much oil itself it's uh, thinned down with uh, plain uh, turpentine oil and it's not runny so i have to to move the color uh, around to get this hazy effect and since uh, there is not much volume of color it's almost uh, as if i remove uh, uh, little uh, you know particles of uh, color I, uh, molecules of color around and this creates this uh, hazy hazy foggy effect it's almost when i'm doing this it's uh, almost as if i'm not using i'm not uh, moving any color it feels uh, as if i'm just uh, playing with the brush uh, and do, do achieving nothing but uh, definitely these uh, molecules of color are moved around and they do create uh, this beautiful effect i hope <laughs> this makes sense to you and that you understand what I'm saying here and uh, definitely it's a process that um, can be tedious and uh, you know um, it, it can take some time and uh, patience but uh, at the same time it's uh, a very satisfying uh, method and uh, of course I don't uh, say that it's the best way to paint a portrait. We have, uh, you know, portraits very, very differently painted in the history of art uh, that are amazing. But um, definitely is something that uh, at this point uh, suits me and relaxes me. And uh, I definitely want to experiment a little bit more on this uh, uh, hazy looking uh, edges and technique. Of course, for this uh, for this portrait, uh, it was a little bit uh, a challenge because all her facial features, the eyes, the eyebrows, and uh, mouth are uh, relatively dark. I would say pretty dark. So um, it, this was a challenge. In most uh, uh, portraits painted in this style, uh, we see eyebrows that are uh, fairly light, very blonde. Uh, 
uh, with, uh, you know, not as sharp as the, the eyebrows and the brows of uh, Maria Callas here. But uh, it definitely was a challenge and the result was uh, pretty uh, astonishing. So here what I'm doing, I'm establishing uh, these lights a little bit more. I am adding some uh, color um, here on the areas where I feel the most, uh, that accept the most uh, light. And uh, now again, I'm using this uh, brush to, to blend these, this um, placed uh, color and uh, blend this and spread it and also almost uh, iron the color a little bit. This technique requires uh, some experience and it requires to be to to have seen some artworks from up close because it can uh, create uh, artworks that uh, are, um, are are ugly i would say uh, a painter should have seen how um, an artwork a painting uh, looks uh, when this um, this uh, technique is used otherwise uh, it can lead to um, you know to just um, creating uh, fog and smoke effect uh, everywhere without any, uh, you know, any base, without something stable. And this is something that uh, I hope you understand. It's a little hard for me to further explain. But anyway, see here how I'm using this brush to almost uh, do her makeup. And uh, this, uh, in some... <laughs> For the for anyone who uses makeup in real life, this will make sense, I guess. Um, and uh, um, it's very very satisfying in a way because the way of applying the color and spreading the color is um, very delicate, very um, you know, very very interesting and satisfying. See here how it's almost as if you are spreading uh, some uh, makeup. As I said earlier, in, for this technique, we have to be careful to not make, to not paint everything in uh, uh, this hazy uh, mode, this hazy way. There have, there has to be, uh, have to be areas where the the color is more um, evident, more strong, and uh, less uh, blending. Otherwise, the result is just uh, a sweet, uh, you know result that uh, is not beautiful at all. Here one more layer of uh, um, stronger color. This um, is something that, uh, uh, as I say, I'm working from uh, a black and white uh, photograph of uh, Maria Callas, so I don't really know uh, I don't have much information on color. That's um, both uh, liberating and uh, a challenge at the same time. I'm not so sure how um, bright, how high in value I should go with uh, painting this uh, portrait. I imagine that uh, I will have to use uh, color tones that are pretty close to titanium white, like pretty bright uh, flesh uh, tones, but uh, at the same time in a way that uh, will make sense and uh, um, in a way that these tones will uh, be painted on her face uh, without, uh, um, without looking, uh, you know, um, ugly or without looking, you know, false in some way. Placing, uh, I'm holding two brushes. I'm holding a brush that is uh, um, to to apply the color, and uh, I'm also uh, holding a brush uh, that can spread the the color. For spreading the color, as I'm proceeding with painting this uh, um, this portrait, uh, I'm using these soft Kolinsky. Uh, brushes. It can be any type of uh, brush that uh, will do the job. And um, you see how nice this Kolinsky brush that uh, uh, we can use for uh, other types of painting, for watercolor or tempera. 
Um, how nice this brush uh, spreads the color and uh, at the same time I'm also uh, if it accumulates uh, color I will uh, uh, wipe the excess uh, color away and I will continue spreading the molecules of uh, color Hi so on patreon.com you can find my full tutorial along with uh, so many others about uh, sfumato, the sfumato technique, the way I have uh, painted this study on uh, Salvatore Mundi. And uh, this is uh, an in-detail uh, lesson on uh, the brushes, the colors that uh, I've used, the way of handling the color and the brushes. And I hope you will find this uh, very informative and uh, uh, useful for you. Thank you so much. Now I'm about to paint some uh, rosy um, areas on her uh, cheek according to what I uh, guess uh, there might be in reality. Uh, of course uh, I'm looking on other portraits from the past and uh, they use those rosy tones, uh, rosy flesh tones on this area of the cheek uh, very often. So I'm gonna use their example and do the same. I will add this uh, rosy dark tones as you see and of course I want to blend them as best uh, to the area of uh, the shadow. I'm using this again soft Kolinsky brush to, to blend uh, these rosy tones as best uh, both towards the light and towards the, the shadow area. If uh, I, I need I will uh, add some uh, even darker colors on uh, that uh, area between light and shadow and thus I will create by spreading an even better um, blending between the light and uh, the shadow. Usually I'm, I'm as I said I'm using two different uh, brushes as I'm doing this uh, blending and uh, um, placing color and blending the color. I would say, and if you had to keep something from this video, I would say that uh, it's really, really important to visit uh, your local uh, painting museum, even if it's not, you know, the best museum in the world, or uh, even if it doesn't have the masterpieces of the Louvre, let's say. Uh, or the Prado, but um, uh, it's really important to have uh, a visual, uh, a mental library of uh, uh, paintings in our head when we are doing these kind of paintings. This will definitely uh, help our work and the richest this uh, the richer this uh, library is in our mind, uh, the better the result. This is because <coughs> This uh, mental uh, library will help us, um, will indicate us uh, the, um, how to proceed with uh, the, these portraits and uh, when to stop painting them, when to consider them painted. And uh, if we are interested in this kind of uh, richness, those libraries will really um, help us uh, um, paint them, of course, with the guidance of our reference photo, etc. Another thing that's uh, very help he helpful, of course, is to do those, uh, to paint uh, studies and copies from uh, the old uh, masters. Uh, this definitely will help us so much in understanding the um, the visual richness of those masterpieces and uh, similarly to achieve uh, similar uh, results. So at this point the portrait is uh, pretty, you know, it's uh, pretty okay, looks okay. I just have to, um, to make it uh, <laughs> feel good to me, uh, to feel convincing, to make it feel um, Charm, charming in some way. 
it really was amazing as I was painting this um, I listened to Maria Kala singing some of her most famous uh, area arias and uh, really it was a great great uh, experience some kind of uh, connection um, some kind of uh, you know it, it was uh, an honor uh, uh, I attributed some honor to her, her talent and uh, her uh, life. It was really, really great listening to her music while I was painting her uh, face. I definitely um, suggest you do something uh, like uh, this. Now, if you find this uh, video interesting, I will upload the full tutorial on my Patreon page and there you can find more on the sfumato technique, uh, the drawing, naturalistic drawing, um, many posts that uh, you might find uh, interesting on both oil pen painting and the tempera painting. So, feel free to... Uh, to visit this uh, page and I definitely want to thank my uh, Patreon supporters there that uh, uh, because without the, your help uh, uh, I wouldn't be able to produce uh, these videos here on YouTube and be a full-time uh, artist in my studio um, paint and uh, teaching in this way on uh, both uh, Patreon and uh, YouTube. So thank you all so much for your support. The minimum I can do is to share with you um, on Patreon some uh, content that uh, might be of uh, help. So anyway, back here. Um, it's a process now, at this point, it's a process of... Um, observation and uh, intuition, I guess, um, a process of uh, making the portrait both realistic but not necessarily photorealistic, um, to have some the charm of this, uh, um, of the brush marks, of the, the sfumato hazy um, moving uh, particles of uh, color and um, yet to create this uh, portrait that really feels uh, naturalistic, feels natural and feels uh, nice. Sometimes even if the portrait uh, feels uh, dry I will uh, use every now and then some completely dry uh, brush and then just, you know, caress the the brush on top of the portrait. So anyway, here you see one more uh, layer and I would guess that uh, this shot here is the most... Uh, <clears throat> uh, one of the most accurate in terms of uh, color is uh, for me, I find completely hard to um, to achieve uh, what I see in reality with what you see in camera. It's pretty pretty similar, but there are some variations and um, so anyway here i'm i'm moving uh, towards you know a more bright uh, uh, highlight painting a more bright highlight so the the layers underneath are not dry here so they are slightly sticky of course they are not very uh, thick and um, they're not extremely thick i guess there's some thickness to them by now but uh, i'm applying this color and it gets uh, a little bit harder to move it around but also it achieves a very very nice and interesting uh, texture I would say. <coughs> and see now how with these highlights uh, um, the portrait looks pretty uh, stunning, <laughs> I would uh, allow me to say this, it looks very nice. But uh, it's also, um, you can uh, decide as I will, uh, you will see me doing, going slightly darker. I have, I have felt that I had to, to cover a little bit 
and the, and bring down these highlights a little bit as they seemed a little they created this shiny effect on her face that uh, I didn't really um, desire they it didn't really work for me so I've uh, but by bringing these tones down uh, uh, something is uh, left, so there are, there is a more soft uh, highlights on on her face. Anyway, this was uh, pretty much uh, the tutorial on the painting the portrait of uh, Maria Callas. I hope uh, uh, this will inspire you to uh, be more in your studio to maybe paint something uh, like this and. Uh, uh, if uh, you learned something out of this video, it's uh, my big uh, pleasure. Thank you so much. Be healthy and creative and uh, I will see you soon with uh, another video. Bye.